There we go. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, this is Ben with Empires Comics uh, here in Sacramento, California, and we are continuing our interviews on Google Hangout, where you you can, of course, watch this later if you don't make it. You can join. You can ask questions of our guests. And uh, tonight, we are welcoming Veronica Fish uh, here to the show with us. Thank you for coming down, Veronica. Hi. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Of course, I'm you agreed to come on because we have been seeing uh, a lot of you in comic books lately. It's a name that we saw popping up uh, a while ago. Um, we see some covers, um, some books, but now we're starting to see quite a bit of you in the comic book scene. Um, what titles are you doing right now? Right now, I'm working on Spider-Woman. Um, I started Spider-Woman with issue 10, and then I took a break for 12, and then I'm continuing through 17. Um, so I'm, I just, I actually, I've just been drawing that today, issue 16. Um, I'm also drawing Slam for Boom Studios. Um, I'm on issue, f I'm drawing issue four right now. It goes so fast. Um, I do covers at the same time. And um, when I have time, I, I'm excited to go back to a pet project, uh, Pirates of Mars, that I've been working on with a friend of mine, JJ, for many years now. So when things slow down, it'll be fun to hop back over to that. But... Yeah, it's busy, busy, busy. It sounds busy. The, the I mean, <laughs> Spider Woman is a nice uh, staple because it's within the Marvel universe. So of course, a lot of people are going to be reading that. Um, but we also uh, had Archie, which has garnered yes. a lot of attention lately. I mean, this was a great time to jump on Archie. The I don't think it's ever sold this well. I've had this store for fifteen years, and this is just kind of like a heyday for whether it be Reggie, Jughead, Archie. How are you enjoying uh, working on that and uh, working with the writers? It was really fun. Um, I worked on Archie for, from issues 5 to 10. Um, and then, I mean, just there was just so many things to do that I switched over to Marvel from, from that point. Um, but it was, it was such a blast. It was such a blast. I loved it. Um, and it was really exciting. And so, I mean, it, it, it just kind of like fell, in, it fell into being because they, they had asked me to come on um, to do other things and then they said well do you want to do like a, a test run so they gave me issues five and six to set, see how the, good a fit that would be and then they were happy with me so I stayed and it was just it was a blast really really liked it well that's really cool uh, to coming on to a book after um, somebody who is so popular right now as far as sales go I mean Fiona yeah. really took that right. thing up so that, I mean, that's kind of cool. They, they, they wanted you to come on to this book to continue the success after she left. I mean, that, oh, that, <laughs> yeah, that was super nerve wracking. You know, you just, you, you don't, you don't, you don't want to ruin it. <laughs> so you just work as hard as you can and cross your fingers and send it out and be like, Oh, I hope this is good. Cause you work your, work your butt off. But, um, but yeah, she's, I mean, and she's just amazing. She's incredible. Um, so, I mean, because she had defined the, the, the character so well, um, then it made my job a lot easier. Now I, I, I can be like, all right, this is, this is what we're going with, and we're going to make it as – try to make it – I mean, you can't ever be, be her. You can't – like, no artist can be another artist, but you just want to make it, for the reader, um, as seamless a transition as, as you can so that everyone's coming into this together and you don't feel like um, – you know, like you don't, you don't want to lose people, so – Hopefully people liked it. it well, at least here, the sales have maintained. So, I mean, oh. I, I don't know the, the full scope, but uh, people were very <laughs> happy. They uh, they were more than willing to keep going with it and roll with it uh, after the lipstick incident and see where it <laughs> um, So, now, one of the comics that I, I'm, I'm really excited that you just started, I believe there's only two issues out so far, is Slam, because we yeah. are actually sponsors of a local roller derby team called the Sac City Rollers. Uh, how cool. did Slam come about? Slam came about, um, so Pam, um, Pam was asked to do a roller derby comic for, for Boom because Pam had written about roller derby. She's a pro roller derby um, lady in the LA Derby Dolls, so that was totally her, her world. And they were looking for an artist, and they asked me to do samples for it, and she liked it. Um, now, my only experience with, with roller derby was when I did the logos for the Boston Derby Dame, which is like our, our local team. Um, so they said, oh, you should come to the bouts and you should check it out. And, um, I, I had, I had never seen a professional roller derby t 
team before and I was just so awestruck <laughs> at the ath athleticism that these these women have and have to have in order to God, just to stay up is incredible <laughs> to like watch them go around. Um, so I was just, I was just struck by that. And um, so then doing the book, I was able to understand how the game's played and all the different moves that, that go into it. Um, yeah, it's tough, tough sport. <laughs> I don't know. If, I, I mean, I would, I would love, and the, the crux of the book is that you, if, if you believe you can do it, you can do it. So I was just about to say, like, I don't think I could ever do that, but maybe, um, maybe I could if I was tough. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We have tryouts every year. You might as well uh, go down and see what you're capable of. Got to learn how to skate. Got to learn how to stay up. <laughs> well, that might be a little bit of a hindrance to, yeah. uh, to the success in roller derby. Uh, okay. But but it, that doesn't matter because uh, from what you just told me prior to us going live, um, you actually uh, were able to uh, devote a full time now to uh, comic books and art. Yes. Yeah, well, I, I taught um, I taught at the Worcester Art Museum for many years while I was painting for galleries and doing comics. And um, it was so great to work with high school age kids. So you get a range of, of kids who are doing art for fun, doing it as a, a hobby, and then you also get kids who are seriously thinking about art school. So it was really fun for me to be able to talk to these kids about um, if they really wanted to do art full time or if they want to keep that something that they don't want to turn into a job because it's it's a, it's a difficult thing when you decide, do I really want to turn my passion into a full time job because sometimes I can take the passion out of it. Um, so it was great for me to be able to have a really candid conversation with a lot of kids about where they wanted to go and be able to tell them really what the, what the day job is and if they wanted to commit to that, um, which is that, you know, if, if you don't work in, in a studio with other artists, um, I mean, I'm, I'm lucky my, my husband is, is in the house working too, so we can draw together. But if you don't have that studio, um, I mean, you're, you're in your art studio all day, every day. So if you, if that's the kind of life that you want, then you should go for it. And if you don't, that's totally, it's totally fine. Well, it, I imagine it takes a lot of um, a lot of self discipline too, because you're in that studio, you're at home, which means right. you have to find a way to avoid all the distractions that home can bring. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. It's it is it's definitely an exercise in self discipline. Um, and then, what also makes it easier is just knowing that you are beholden to these companies who have publishing deadlines. So. Um, it's even it, it takes even more self di discipline when when you're doing self published work because you don't have an editor you know being like where is this um, so yeah I have a lot of respect for people who who self publish and do this day job because it's it's it can be grueling but it's it's worth it if you really love it. Well, speaking of the self publishing in the small press world. Um, mm -hmm. You've got a few projects that I don't think have ever been distributed through Diamond. Am I correct? Uh, what is it? The Wendy Project, um, the Pirates, um, and Challenger? Did any of them go through Diamond? Um, I don't know if, you know, that's a good question. I know that um, the, the Wendy Project, we have a book agent for that one. So um, Dara is really pursuing a lot of uh, book pub publishers. So I don't I don't know what their relationship is with with Diamond at this point. Um, I think maybe they are, but they definitely are looking at libraries and they're looking at at schools and um, and also comic book shops at the same time. So I don't know. It's kind of, I guess it's kind of a different beast. But Challenger might be going through Diamond. I'm not really sure. Um, and then Pirates, we were we did Comicsology for that, which worked out really really great. Now, is there a hard copy of that available too, or is it only digital? There was a hard copy, but we sold out, and then we ran out of money to print more. So we're trying to figure out a printing on demand process. So yeah, printing, like doing the the hard copy yourself is is a difficult beast to <laughs> to tame. <laughs> to figure yeah. out how you're going to do that. So yeah. Well, uh, for anybody who wants to see your artwork, uh, there are what two volumes of Pirates of Mars, and you can get both of them on Comicsology. You can get the first one on Comixology, and the second one is midway through because I had to stop to work on um, Boom and Marvel. So that is that is something I'm excited to get back to and, and finish up. But yeah, you can you can get the first volume um, on Comixology, and we have like a 
like a bonus issue and supplemental materials too. Okay, that's awesome. Um, so then a couple good questions about you. Um, how did you get into art? Is this something that you have always just been interested in, something that you exhibited when you were young, or is it something that you, you saw and wanted to do and put yourself into that role? My grandfather was really into Bob Ross, so he would paint in his basement. And I really liked that that was such a bright spot for him. I mean, painting was something that really made him, made him happy. So I knew, I, I think maybe I, that's when that transferred to me. Um, so then I, I, I figured, well, you gotta go to art school. Um, and once I was saving up to, going, to go to art school, um, I got a job at a comic book store, even though I didn't really know much about comics at that point. Like, I loved Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and I, I loved I loved these animated shows that were based on comics. But it wasn't until I got into the comic book store that I was like, "Oh, everything I like was <laughs> comes from a comic book." And then it was there that I got really into Will Eisner, like crazy into Eisner. I was buying all the Dennis Kitchen reprints from the '70s, and then at that at that point, DC had just started to to put out the um, spirit archives. So I was so into Eisner's work, like the the Dreamer was a, a book I read constantly. Um, and I actually even even with the with the Dreamer, I had no idea that those were based on real people. I didn't I didn't know that that was Jack Kirby. I didn't know that you know that was Iger. Um, so suddenly I became aware of this giant world that had been going for decades. And all of a sudden, it was like all here. Um, so I got really into Madman, and um, good choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just, I was. Oh, and oh my goodness, Jack Staff. I love, I love Paul Paul Grist. He's one of my absolute favorite comic book artists. Have you ever um, read Mage by Wagner? I know of it, but I haven't read it. You check that one out. Just because just you mentioned Madman, I think uh, I think you'd really enjoy that one. Did completely oh. different. But I love them both, and 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 I think that you would probably would too. Okay, I'm writing it down. But yes, I did I did see that on the on the shelf for sure. Um, yeah. So from from there, I went to the School of Visual Arts, and I was studying um, illustration because I felt like this is going to sound so snobby. I felt like um, I that's where my career was going to be wasn't wasn't painting. But at the same time, at the School of Visual Arts, it's one of the few colleges that actually gives you a, a degree in, in sequential art. So going on, like teaching classes were like Dave Mazzucchelli and Klaus Janssen and Walt Simonson and all, and all these people, like I didn't understand that they were right there at my disposal. So it actually wasn't until after I had graduated and I realized that, yeah, painting's great, but it turns out that the, the whole time I actually really did like comics. And that um, if I had been a little bit more adventurous in choosing my major, I actually would have chosen sequential art as a major. But when you're 18, you don't really know what you want. <laughs> like, <laughs> you don't have it. Yeah, like you just don't have it figured out. So um, I'm lucky that even though that wasn't my area of, um, of study then, you can do it now. Um, so... Yeah, everything. I, I guess everything worked out for the best. <laughs> yeah, I think it. Uh, I think it moved along very well. I mean, you've done everything from painting. Um, you, you get what you've done. Character designs. You've done storyboarding um, for. I mean, uh, you did some of the character designs for uh, Riverdale. Is that correct? I did the concept art for the TV show. Um, yeah. And that was that was really fun to do. And then I think, I think the TV executives may have. Um, chosen Josie based on how I did Valerie because John John Goldwater had, had asked me to, to put Valerie in it and then when we were looking at production photos from the TV show we were like oh cool they made Josie so that's the right that, off of that they're going with so um, that was that was pretty neat that was fun well, to do well, no it sounds like things worked out uh, for the better uh, by picking <laughs> it may have taken you a little longer to get to the comic book world uh, yeah. but you probably gathered so much more along the way do you still do paintings because uh, I know you do a lot of galleries correct I do yeah um, I've, I've had to drop out of galleries for this whole year which was um, which was weird because sometimes it's really fun jumping back and forth between painting and and comics because they're two like your brain is in two different places um, so I have a half done painting of 
Blade Runner. I have like Pris, and she's like opening up, and there's all these kind of cool gears in her face. I can't wait for that to be finished. <laughs> so so you, have a, you have a pretty good uh, science fiction uh, feel to a lot of your stuff. I saw some Flash Gordon on your page. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, okay. You know, the, the classic pulpy uh, helmets and such, uh, stuff like that, <laughs> which is really cool. I love that kind of stuff. Thanks. Yeah. I love it, too. Yeah, obviously, you do. Um, <laughs> so real quick, I have to ask a question because you put this in your – or on your website, and you ate chicken hearts on a stick. Oh, yes, I did. So my, my husband's brother lives in, in Japan, so um, we've gone to go visit them a couple times. And there's this restaurant that's down the, down the road from, from, from them. It's like a traditional yakitori place. And the, the yakitori places have like liver and they have um, every part. They've, they've even got something called name, name kotsu, which is like soft bone and like cartilage. You can get the entire animal <laughs> in pieces on sticks. Um, and I don't know what I, I don't know what I was thinking. I was just like, I was trying to gross out my, my big brother. <laughs> I was like, how, did, how did it taste? <laughs> they, they taste, um, well, they're so, the, the meat is so dark because it's like all, um, I don't know, it's like, it's like all heavy tissue. So I don't know if you've ever had duck, which is like super dark and fatty. The heart is a lot like that. It's very gamey. Um, yeah, it was really weird. I probably, I, I won't, I don't think I'll do it again. Cause I, I don't, I don't, I don't even know if, if his response was like worth it. Cause he was like, ew, gross. And then I still had three more <laughs> to, to finish. <laughs> I was like, oh. uh, that's awesome. So, well then, um, well, Veronica, thank you very much for coming down, uh, or coming down for joining us on yeah. here. Um, is there anything that we should look out for that you have on the horizon? Is something, anything you can tell us about or just keep following uh, spider woman and slam? Yeah, just keep following spider woman and slam. Um, I might be working on a, on a horror thing, um, that we're going to pitch around and hopefully I'll get back on the pirates of Mars science fiction volume two pretty soon too. So yeah, for right now, slam and spider woman are coming out in the immediate future and then we got a lot of fun stuff planned later on. Okay, that's perfect. Where can they find you online? What's uh, the best way for them to to connect with you? I I post the most on on Instagram, so I'm at uh, it's Veronica Fish, and the same handle for Twitter. So that's it. All right, that's nice and easy. Uh, make sure you guys go over to Comicsology, check out uh, Pirates of Mars. Of course, go to her website. She's got a lot of great prints uh, and work up there that you can purchase uh, sketchbooks, I believe. And, uh, you know, like she said, make sure you follow Spider-Woman. Make sure that you uh, check out the new issues of Slam. Uh, three should be out pretty quick here. And thank you again, Veronica, for coming down. Oh, Thanks, you know what? Yeah. I always try to ask somebody really, like, one hard-hitting question at the end, just so sure. we can get to know you a little bit more. Um, sure. What's your favorite kind of pasta? My favorite kind of pasta? Ooh, far, farfalle. Yeah. Okay. That, that's a good <laughs> But, but gnocchi is by far the best kind of pasta. But um, <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Yes, it was a trick question. Um, <laughs> thank you, guys. Uh, make sure you go check her out. Um, make sure you stay tuned for uh, more of these. We're going to have more great artists, uh, writers, uh, just creators coming up soon. Uh, thank you very much, Veronica, and have a great night. Thanks. You too. Bye.